Hi, I'm Dan Donahue, Principal Solutions Architect at NetHopper, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to create an application network and make a liar out of my t-shirt. So let's head on over to my SAS. So you can see here I'm logged in, and I don't have any resources as indicated by my dashboard, so I'm going to go ahead and define the clusters, which is essentially creating the metadata for each cluster that I will add to the network. So I'm going to name this first one on-prem ops. It'll be my hub cluster. Recall a hub cluster is the one cluster in an application network that has a reachable IP address from which we create a secure token and give it to edge clusters so that they can call home and attach to the hub cluster using MTLS, thus creating a secure multi-cloud network. All the uh, <clears throat> clusters I'm going to use today are uh, running Minikube just for a, a simple uh, demo purposes. And I'm going to tag this one as on-prem. You'll see how tags are used later in the video for distributing applications. But essentially, we tag clusters and we tag Kubernetes objects or applications. And we create rules that say these applications that match this tag should be distributed to clusters that match that. Again, that'll be in the application uh, video. So we'll do that. And so I'll create that one and I'll save it. And I'm going to cre create another one. I'm going to call it AWS EC2 because it's going to be running in Northern Virginia in the <clears throat> US East 2 availability zone of uh, Minikube, uh, Minikube of uh, AWS. And I'm going to tag this one Edge because I'm going to use this as an Edge cluster. And we'll tag that. And I'm going to create another one for my Google Cloud instance. And that is running in their availability zone, also in Virginia. Now, the, adding the context is important here because we actually use it, as you'll see in a moment, when uh, installing our agent and all the other operators that we use. I'm also going to tag this cluster as an edge because you'll see uh, in a moment when we distribute applications how that works. So I have my clusters defined and now I want to add them to a network. So I'm going to create a network. I'm just going to call it devops.net. And the first thing I have to do is create my hub cluster. So the other clusters have somebody to call home to. So I'm going to enter in my IP address and I am going to add, I'm going to add port overrides here. The reason I'm adding port overrides is because I have a firewall running in my house and I only have certain ports open. Now, the only port that really matters here for a simple application network is this Edge TCP extra port. That's the port that I'll open in my firewall so Edge clusters can call home to this IP address to our agent running in the hub cluster. These other ports are used for intra-cluster as well as uh, hub cluster to hub cluster communications, but that's not the purpose of this demo. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and install that. And this is a one-time install. You can see here uh, that <clears throat> we create this command that will say what you know context to use. It'll create the namespace if it doesn't exist, and it will download our all the manifests it needs to install our agent, our router, and a few other um, agents that we use like Argo CD, Crossplane, and so forth, at least in the case of this hub cluster. So I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard. It's a one-time instruction, and I'm going to come over here to my hub cluster. This is my hub cluster up top. This is my Amazon instance down here, and I'm going to paste that command, and that's the one-time install uh, of our agent that you'll need for um, the Cuddle console. Other than that, you'll be driving everything from the SaaS. And so while that's installing, which we can watch here in real time, we uh, you'll see it go to installing, and then it'll install the router, it'll mount the router, it'll install observability, and it can take four or five minutes. So I'm going to pause the video, and I'll be right back once the network is up and running. And we're back. We can see our hub cluster is up and running. You can see the agent status here, meaning we're talking to our back end. Argo server is up and running and waiting for edge clusters to connect. And so let's go do that. And Grafana is up as well. So we are going to add, let's add our AWS cluster first. Let me pull that over. And my AWS cluster. 
clusters here. Oops. Wrong paste. I've got to get those instructions again because you can only copy them one time. And there we go. And so he'll be installing. And while that's installing, we'll go off and we will attach the Google cluster as well. Get my Google console over here. Paste it here. and wait for it to install. And now I'll pause the video while those edge clusters install. As you can see, everything's installed. It'll take a few minutes and I am gonna go ahead and pause the video. And we're back and we see that both the Amazon cluster and the Google cluster are now attached. We now have a hybrid cloud scenario with an on-prem cluster or a private cluster connected to a pu public cluster running in Amazon and a public cluster running in Google. And we can see here that we can look at the kubectl console here and we could say kubectl get all namespace. We installed it in NetHopper. And we'll be able to see that we have the NetHopper agent and all the other operators we install and if I come to Amazon and I do a kubectl I, we're in the default namespace so I just say kubectl get all and I could see NetHopper running a scupper our router is running in there and so forth and so now we have a fully formed application network by which we can then do application distribution which will happen in the next video